Every year, St. Catharines is the host of the Niagara Grape and Wine Festival. Since 1951, this has been a time when wine enthusiasts and fun seekers of all ages pay homage to the valuable harvest of the Niagara Grape. The 10-day festival is packed with things to do, like watching parades, dancing the night away, discovering the arts and crafts of the area, touring the vineyards and wineries, and sampling the many varieties of grapes and wines the Niagara region is so famous for. The heart of the festival lies in the 25,000 acres of vineyards throughout the Niagara Peninsula. 25,000 acres may be hard to comprehend, but one thing's for sure, that's a lot of grapes. In fact, 85% of Canada's total grape crop is grown in the Niagara Peninsula, where the unique combination of soil and climate rival the other great wine regions of the world. Production of the prized French hybrid and vinifera grapes has advanced dramatically during the past 20 years. And these are the grapes which have stimulated the advances of the light, dry table wines, which are earning respect in Canada and abroad. The hybrids were first planted in the 1940s, and today more than 45 different varieties of French hybrid, vinifera, and labrusca grapes are being produced commercially in Niagara. During the festival, the public has the opportunity to take conducted tours of the vineyards and wineries and see not only how grapes are grown, but also the processing of fine wines. After you see how the wine gets into the bottles, you'll have lots of time to sample the product of an earlier year's harvest. But you don't have to go to a winery to enjoy Niagara's finest. There are plenty of parties, dances and other events saluting Ontario's wines. You can meet Mr. Grape, the festival's mascot. Festivals are family times too. Parades make a great family outing. At the Pied Piper Parade, sponsored by the students of Brock University, more than a thousand youngsters in costume march through the downtown streets of the city. There's never a shortage of clowns or floats to provide support, while musical groups from Canada and the United States travel hundreds of miles to form part of the entertainment. Youngsters from around the Niagara Peninsula take full advantage of this opportunity to partake in the festivities, display their baton and musical skills, and parade their own imaginative decorations for an appreciative audience. Each year, a special and different flavor is added to the festival's program by providing special recognition for one of the peninsula's many cultural groups. Here, the colorful costumes, the exciting music and dancing, and the distinctive foods of the Ukrainian community generate special interest for the thousands of visitors to the September celebrations. chosen Grape King is regarded as the highest honor in Canada's grape and wine country. In the fall, research specialists carefully check the Niagara vineyards, and to the one judge of the finest goes the honor of the Grape King. Fred Herndor, whose 225-acre vineyard won the judge's favor, rules over the festival and will then work on the promotion of Ontario's wines and grape products throughout the year of his reign. For every king, there must be a queen. Each contestant must be sponsored by a social or service club, and the queen is chosen for her intelligence, charm, grace, and her knowledge of the grape and wine industry. Bonnie DeLisney, appropriately representing the Canadian-Ukrainian Committee, was selected from the 30 contestants and will represent the festival in parades, through news media interviews, by hosting club meetings and receptions, and attracting people from all over to the annual celebrations. It takes a lot of behind-the-scenes preparation to get the grand parade on the road. Floats must be assembled, beauty queens freshened up, marching bands, majorettes, and military units rehearsed, and even special costumes designed, to name a few. 
Units traveling hundreds of miles mix with more local units to provide a glorious, diverse panoply of sheer entertainment. The careful selection of the units has brought the Grand Parade recognition as the finest annual street parade in Canada. And this 90-minute spectacle attracts hundreds of thousands of parade watchers. Everyone loves a parade. William Shatner, best known for his role as Captain Kirk on TV's Star Trek, circles the route through the downtown streets of St. Catharines as honorary marshal of the Grand Parade. Mayor Roy Adams provides a civic greeting for all the festival's visitors. Bonnie DeLisney, the festival queen, graces the city of St. Catharines float, and not far behind is Grape King Fred Herndon on the float of the Ontario Grape Growers Marketing Board. The annual Grape and Wine Festival serves as a reminder that grape growing is an important industry in Ontario. Annual harvests reach 80,000 tons, and most of these grapes are taken for processing by Ontario's wineries and grape juice operators. Thousands of people are employed for the harvest and also to provide the year-round care and attention that must be invested in tending the 25,000 acres of vines. During the winter, Niagara's 14 million vines are pruned. In the springtime, the arms of the vines are tied to the supporting frames to gain the greatest benefit from the sun during Niagara's long, warm summers. In the very early summer, the grape bunches are carefully thinned, a special control measure to assure a crop of prime quality. After the harvest comes the craft of the master winemakers. Ontario processes a full range of high-quality, pleasant wines in all categories, and they have an enviable listing of awards from international competitions to prove their prowess. Visitors are attracted by the festival's unique character, which depends so heavily on the vineyards and wineries, and its location in the center of historic Niagara's Fruit Belt country. The Grand Parade is yet another highlight presenting 30 marching bands, three dozen colorful parade floats, twirlers, marchers, and clowns. Yes, everyone loves a parade, including national PC leader Joe Clark. Following the parade, there's a score of more events to choose from, including an evening with the Central Command Band of the Canadian Armed Forces. The distinctive church of St. Cyril and Methodius is one of the finest examples of Ukrainian architecture in North America. During the 10-day festival, the church opens its doors to visitors to marvel its precious icons and the bold colors of the distinctive religious artwork.
more than 120 separate events are included as part of the vintage celebrations, with one traditional item being the blessing of the grapes, giving thanks for the past harvest. Montebello Park is the place for more outdoor fun where visitors may inspect a huge arts and crafts exhibition, old country music and dancing, and grape stomping. At the Mayor's Grape Stomping Championships, Niagara Peninsula politicians bare their feet in hopes of dashing their way to becoming the best grape stomper of all times. Some achieve nothing but purple feet. The whole idea is to squeeze as much grape juice as they can in a set amount of time. The one with the most juice when the clock runs out is the winner. For obvious reasons, the best of clothes are left home for this political race. The Arts and Crafts exhibit is the largest hosted in Niagara. While strolling through the park, you can see a delightful array of arts talent. Painting, weaving and handcrafts, even sculpture. And it's all creative artwork of superior quality. After examining the arts, there's time to relax as talented performers provide authentic dances and colorful costumes from cultures the world over. Even as the festival moves to a close, grape growers are busy in the region's rich vineyards, harvesting their grapes and getting ready for the next season. The Niagara Grape and Wine Festival has something for all tastes. The historic treasures of the Niagara frontier are spread throughout the vineyard countryside. The Welland Canal, the mighty falls of Niagara, the charm of Niagara on the lake form just a part of the nearby opportunities for exploration. You'd assume the committee for the Grape and Wine Festival would breathe easy and rest once the celebrations finally come to an end. However, the closing of one festival means that energies now focus on making the next Niagara Grape and Wine Festival even more entertaining than the last. So we'll see you in St. Catharines, the heartland of the famous Niagara Peninsula, next September for the annual Niagara Grape and Wine Festival.